coming to you a little early this week. It is Wednesday, almost nine o'clock. We have a nine o'clock hair appointment with my hair goddess, Katie. Oh my gosh, you guys, I lost count with how long or how many years I have been seeing Katie, thanks to one of you guys. And uh, it's funny because initially this is like the abstract salon or abstract studio branding color and it used to be just a coincidence that every time i'd come see katie i was wearing some kind of like fluorescent chartreuse or highlighter color but today i was like you know what might as well keep it on brand <laughs> i don't know what i had picked out but it was definitely not this color and today is one of those days where it's like are you gonna rain or not because i'm solar powered and if it is cloudy dreary breezy just there's no sun i don't have the best day and it's not like i have a bad day i just i don't feel like bright-eyed and bushy-tailed if the sun is out i'm like heck yeah i can run for president <laughs> maybe not that extreme but i don't remember the last time i came to see katie but the last time i came we did this like lightning blonding situation and it's uh it's been a while i just kind of want to bring it up so that when I do this, do you see how dark my hair looks? So anytime I have a ponytail, it looks like I'm a complete brunette because all the blonde is down here. It's grown out so far that it kind of covers almost the top of my head. So definitely bringing some some light into here. It, it's been a it's been a it's, it's been a decision because I every time I get to this length, so it's like boob length just pretend, pretend there's boobs there every time my hair gets to boob length is when i cut it off and i love it for a few weeks and then i miss having long hair do i prefer short hair absolutely short hair is just my thing i'm always going to be like the right above the shoulder hair girl with an angle like i always need to have the length in the front the short in the back that's just always that's I, like my signature look since the spice girls came out posh spice like that was that that was the impression that's my core memory and that will forever be my perma length my perma length is always short but it has been nice to play around with long hair it's been very convenient with like the baseball games and all the time we've spent outside to be able to successfully like get it out of my face but it is hard to maintain, you guys. I don't know how you guys do it. Those of you that have long, beautiful hair, my friend Paola has hair to her butt cheeks and there is not a split end in sight. How does she do it? I don't know because my hair is barely here and look at this. Like I could scrub stains out of pants with this. I could, I could, I could pressure wash the floor with this and use it as friction. <laughs> okay, I know someone's gonna ask about this. These are the little if you have really skinny fingers and you really wanna wear some jewelry or your weight fluctuates a lot because you eat a lot of salt, you retain water, et cetera, et cetera, these are um, like ring sizers, I guess you can say. It's just like a little spiral. It kind of looks like those elastic hair ties and you cut it to size and they come in different widths so rings don't fall off. Or if you fluctuate in weight, like um, weight loss or retaining fluid or you ate Chinese food last night, anyone else? If I eat Chinese food and I eat Chinese food, what, do you see how, how dry my hair is? <laughs> It's clean, but that's how dry it is. We eat Chinese food at least once a week, but like the real stuff. And so if I don't take off my jewelry the night before, I can't take it off the next morning. Sorry, that's just what happens. And I think it's just common with a lot of specific cuisines that use either MSG or a lot of sodium in their cooking, whether it's because of the vinegars or the sauces or the salts that they use, but man, do I regret it? No. Am I going to change my life goals? Absolutely not. Anyway, I am not late, but it is exactly nine o'clock. So I need to get my butt into the salon and show Katie the cool trick that my hair does now. Does anyone like this isn't good, right? <laughs> does this mean my hair is damaged? <laughs>
always, I can't remember the last time I was at the salon that long. My appointment was at nine o'clock. It's 1.30 and I just got home. My goodness. Okay, so before I say bye for today, because keep in mind it's Wednesday, we still have to do the dinner, the pickup, like the after school dismissal. That's what I meant by pickup. We have an introduction to middle school meeting today, which I'm not ready for because I refuse to say I have a middle schooler. And uh, baseball practice. So I'm way behind on my house chores, laundry, dishes, dinner prep. Luckily, I've gotten into the habit of going grocery shopping Monday mornings, and then the minute I get home, I prep everything for dinners that week. So I don't have to like necessarily chop or cut or anything. Everything's ready to go. I just have to, you know, set the table, pull out the pans that I'm using, or roaster, or whatever. Today we're doing thighs, cauliflower, and leftover rice. We had two kinds of rice this week, and so they get to pick. And that's one of the fun things. It's like, oh, I made too much rice. What am I gonna do? Oh, we'll let them believe they have a choice, but really they're just eating leftovers. So I wanted to show you guys my hair. I wanted to jump on here and be like, look, this is the after. Wow, right? Yeah, sitting there for just a couple of hours. Now when I do this, I don't look like a brunette. It all kind of is matchy-matchy. I am just, you know, when I make these, these um, compliments, I always feel like they can be interpreted the wrong way. Like, oh my God, I can't believe like Katie's able to match, you know, so much growth because it's like, obviously she can. She's a freaking master at what she does. But it's still to me, because it's out of my wheelhouse, I'm like, gosh, how does she like, such an intro, like this is hair. It's like hair one by one. Like how is she able to match work that she did in October to now? You know, it's April. It's crazy. I am always like <sighs> taken aback. So last time I went to see Katie in, I think it was in December, she did a deep conditioning mask. All we did was a uh, gloss and a deep conditioning mask. And I was gonna ask her, hey, what mask is it? And I remember she said something, it was uh, Shumira. I always oh, say that name. It's a Japanese hair care brand, Shumira. Shumira? Anyway, sorry. Uh, I was like, that's fine. I'll just, I'll search it. She says Sephora carries it, I'll search it. They have like eight different hair masks. So when I saw her today, I was like, hey, that mask you did on my hair last time? She's like, oh yeah, it's uh, this one. And she showed me, but you have to try this one. So this is the newest one that they have. And she said it's, absolutely hair changing for us, you know, you know us, that have like two and a half baby hairs. It's a strengthening and thickening mask. And she's like, it actually works. So fun fact, I don't know if you guys know this. So Katie's like specialty is blonde, just anything blonde related and hair extensions. And she's really good at hair extensions because she has hair like me, super fine hair. Like I'm talking, her ponytail is probably just as big as mine. And so if anybody is gonna give us advice or good tips on thin hair or fine hair, like, like, like us, I'm just saying us because it makes me feel better, okay? So just, just roll with it. Just, you know, like when your girlfriend's complaining about her husband or whatever and you're like, yeah, I know, just, just say yeah. And so she's she's the one that knows. So I'm excited to try that mask and let you guys know if it really is. She says it really gives you that like, like strong hair feeling. My hair has never felt like weak or brittle uh, that I've noticed. But you know, after this morning's little intro where you guys saw the Maybe, maybe I haven't noticed. So I'll let you guys know how that works. I am happy to report that the Sephora sale has been going on for uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, six days now. Six days? I'm terrible. Anyway, it's been going on for, for a while now and I haven't bought anything. And my plan is to not buy anything. After we got our taxes done last week, I'm like, yeah, I, I really need to refocus and reframe and just re everything rethink like do I really do I really need that so uh, we are gonna try not to buy anything you know because the things that I usually buy during these sales are things like my permanent staples mascaras foundations uh, uh, shampoos just the stuff that I always use but if we're actually gonna head in the direction of being smarter with our spending then 
maybe a $28 shampoo is not the right answer or maybe buying a $100 perfume when I already have like 12 other options that I haven't used waiting. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know this is, these are the thoughts that I have and I'm just, I'm just sharing them with you. But anyway, that is it for today. That's it for Wednesday. Um, oh, actually that's not it for Wednesday. Hey, mama, it's a beer. Oh, they haven't seen your haircut. They haven't seen your haircut. You show your friends? Say, hey, I got a haircut on Monday and I want to show it to you guys. Look up at mama. Duffy. Ay, esos pelos tan bonitos que te dejaron. But this is an angelito. It's an angelito, la mama. Look at those ears. Oh, that's not, oh, the nice. Look at that. Your haircut is so nice. Look at your nubbin. I can actually see your nubbin now. It's nice. Yes, that's so nice. Can you tell your friends you'll see them tomorrow? Say, see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you guys, happy Thursday. It is almost 9.30. Me and little miss are going to see the vet because little miss needs some vaccines. I don't think I mentioned this to you guys recently or in yesterday's little bit, but we are going to Louisiana next weekend, Parker and I and Mern. So we're gonna put Ernie in the good old car and we're gonna haul her to Louisiana and give her that farm dog life. Wait, that sounded weird. Like we're just gonna go take her to the farm? No. So Parker hasn't seen his mom in a while and so we're just gonna go put some eyes on her and see how she's doing. And Parker thought, he's like, you know what? I mean, she's doing so well, she's so happy. She's never been here before. I think the double, the double for sure has been there. I'm not sure if Wesley or Sophia ever went to Louisiana, but, it's uh, it's fun, you know, it's just land. It's so much open space and it's kind of where Ernie thrives. So his theory is taking her will be like a wellness trip. <laughs> like, uh, like, a, like a meditation spawn wellness vacation because she'll get to roam around and you know, eat a bunch of uh, Parker's mom's food, which she is one of those people that is so obsessed with dogs that she will like slide them all the scraps from the table, like everything off of her plate because she gets so excited that they're excited. <laughs> so it's gonna be fun, but I'm a little, I mean, you know, I always break it down to you guys, completely honest. I'm a little anxious because, I mean, it's a five hour road trip and that's a long time for Ernie to be in the car. We've never had her in the car that long. And so it's it's a little stressful. It, it, it's giving me vibes like, uh, you know, moms, when uh, you're planning a trip with your kids, and I don't say vacation, because if you're taking your kids, it's a trip. If you're taking no kids, it's a vacation. So you know when you're going on a trip, uh, you have to pack for the kids, organize activities, make sure they're comfortable, you know, all of this other stuff. Meanwhile, dad just drives or dad just packs for himself or, and so I'm a little, and to say that this has happened before is a fair statement. <laughs> So I'm a little nervous. I'm a little apprehensive that it's gonna turn into like a, I'm a super tied up bundle of nerves for like six hours and uh, Parker gets to drive. So it's totally fine because I hate driving, but I don't want this whole idea of, oh, Mern gets a wellness fun trip and I am like stressed out, like I'm gonna lose her <laughs> for three days. Which is why we're gonna put an air tag on her. <laughs> I know, I know, you have to be within like 200 feet to be able to like find something, but it's just gonna make me feel that much better knowing that at least she's tagged in some ways. I mean, she has a chip and her caller has her phone number, so <laughs> it's not a big deal, but you know. You know those little like band-aids that we kind of set up for ourselves so that, you know, we feel better? So anyway, all of that to say that Selfie needs to get some current vaccines. My dogs are usually pretty, like, we, we get their vaccines almost 
before they're due. Like, you know, you have that window of like, well, I don't want it to expire, so you kind of overlap a little bit. So my, my dogs are pretty spot on. They get their comprehensive exams twice a month, or twice, well, twice a year. They get their dental cleaning once a year, and they're always current on their vaccines. And you know, with the whole Ernie cancer scare and Wesley's passing and all of that stuff, Little Miss fell between, what does that say? Fell between the crack. We kind of overlapped a little bit on her and uh, we are leaving her with Mr. Pitt. I know we've talked about him and his family before, but if you guys are in the North Dallas area and you are ever needing uh, dog training, dog boarding, dog anything, like this family's where it's at. I have always had special needs pets, you know, since I got divorced. The double with special needs when I got divorced and then soon thereafter, Parker and I met in June and in July, Wesley got his diabetes uh, diagnosis. So then he became special needs. Ernie was special needs because she had severe trauma from being abused and couldn't be around any males, like any, any men at all, be, be, you know, without being triggered and really scared. And so if she's the only one that's like, Meh good to go. So Mr. Pitt has always been a big, big, big resource for our family. We go out of town, you know, Wesley had two or three, Wesley had two pills, his injection for his insulin, a very specific um, eating schedule. He had at one point, I mean, right after his eye surgery, he had like eight drops, but since getting boarded, he was on three drops multiple times a day. <laughs> The double was on two pills and a cough syrup. And so it's just been one of those things where like my dogs are so particular and so special needs that like going anywhere without them was basically impossible. I remember I had a trip once right after I got divorced and it was a work trip and I had to board the dogs at this place and I had to cut my trip short because apparently the person that was responsible for like this boarding uh, facility, like they were these really, 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 really old women. It was, I guess it was like their little retirement nest egg project. So they're like, they all look like grandmas and they were so sweet and so helpful and so kind, but like Ernie broke through the gate and like bit her sister. So I had to just come home. I was like, no, this isn't worth it. I'm not even gonna be able to enjoy myself, focus or do anything that I gotta do. So I'm just gonna do what I need to do, check the box for, for my job and then come home. And then soon after we found Mr. Pet. So we are going to take Ernie to Louisiana and then just board this little nugget, which is so weird. Like she can be all by herself all weekend. So I wanna say she's gonna be lonely, but this dog thrives when she is like the star of the show. When she, she would be perfect in an only dog household. So look at her, she's smiling right now knowing we're talking about her. So that's what we have going on today. So it's Thursday, uh, or, uh, Sophia will have her doc doctor's appointment. Then uh, we have to pick up the boys from school. Co-parents, dad's having uh, surgery today. So he is in our thoughts and prayers all morning. You know, like my stomach is in a bundle of knots. You know, to say that we are a modern family is an understatement, but uh, co-parents, parents and I are actually super close. They love Parker. Um, we hang out, you know, we see each other all the time at the boys baseball games and just having that feeling of home in a place that is, I guess now my home after being in Dallas for what? Uh, 12 years now. Gosh, time flies, man. It feels like yesterday. So having that feeling of a parent close by is, it just so, it feels so good. But you know, just like the good stuff that comes with it, like seeing them and, and watching them play with their grandkids and taking them to do fun things. Uh, you know, the other stuff comes along with it too, like worrying about their health and worrying about if they're okay, if they're happy. And you know, they are just, the classiest, sweetest, most amazing parents ever. Like you would win the parent lottery with co-parents, parents. They just, you know, they're, they're those immigrant parents that believe that their life, their sole happiness revolves around their kids. And to grow up in a family, in a culture that is a total opposite, like they have kids because they're supposed to, but once the kids are old enough, like we're responsible for our parents, like we have to take care of them. 
and I do believe that in some ways, but sometimes it's nice to still feel like a child and to still feel taken care of and not to always, ha you know, that feeling of, of taking care of others or your phone rings and you're like, oh crap, what do my parents need? You know, they're gonna need something. So we are, we're trying to stay busy and active this morning and wait for the news of, you know, he's out of surgery and everything's okay. But I text co-parent this morning. I was like, hey, let me know if there's anything I can do for you, if there's any way I can support you guys, if there's anything I can do to help with the kids, with dinners, with whatever, let me know. I'm available. Parker's like, let me know what's going on. What are the updates, you know? <laughs> he always jokes. He's like, do you think they want to adopt me? I was like, if they're going to adopt anyone, it's going to be me. <laughs> So anyway, we are gonna go inside now and get this little miss up to date on her vaccines I don't know what we got going on today. Uh, I know boys go back to dad today Hopefully maybe I don't know maybe co-parent needs to be available to his uh, dad and mom, but uh, Tomorrow is Friday. Do we have plans tomorrow? I feel like we have something important tomorrow and I can't remember what it is I know Saturday is gonna be busy for this mom because I have two baseball games. So gonna work on my tan just kidding <laughs> I was telling one of the other baseball moms I'm like look my goal is to be one of the moms that gets in trouble by the umpire like that's gonna be my ultimate goal but I'm gonna wait until Mateo ages out of this baseball bracket that he's in <laughs> so I don't mess stuff up for him but hey do you want to say bye to your friends say see you later look at your friends say bye friends do you wish me luck I hope I get good news. I always get good news because I'm a thug. It's right. It's right. <laughs> Two hours later. Holy moly. Well, that took a lot longer than expected. It is 11 o'clock. When I called to make the appointment, they were like, yeah, don't even worry. It's going to be a 30 minute appointment. But they had an emergency while we were there. And I was like, no, dude, take as long as it takes. You let you take care of that baby. <laughs> But Sophia was, was not as, as happy as, as I was to, to wait. So they did her vaccines. They did updated blood work, checked her little teefers, and they actually did an aspirate on three masses that she has on her body. She's always been kind of like warty, like she has little skin tags and little pimples, but she has these three perfectly round lumps all over her body. She has one on her neck and two on her back leg and the skin around them looks really, really taut. And they said, there's nothing we can do or nothing we should do unless they're painful or they grow. Well, they've been growing. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. There's been a lot of C word happening recently and I'm not about to uh, have to experience that again. So they asked, they, they told me, they're like, okay, well, we can do an aspirate, like a biopsy right now and let you know if there's any like cells there that are, you know, alarming or some, anything we can worry about. And I was like, well, I'd much rather wait until she gets her dental prophylaxis because since she's gonna be under anesthesia, then you can just lance them, you know, while, while she's under, just take them out. And he's like, well, the thing is, and I'm like, uh-oh, we got her blood results and her liver values have tripled since the last time we saw her. He's like, it could be as basic as it's because of her age, um, or she's fighting some kind of inflammation or something in her liver. So we can't do anything about her dental until she gets her liver values under control. And I was like, oh my God, this isn't the first time she has liver issues. So I'm like, okay, well, let's say that it is an age related thing. Then he's like, well, then we're not doing her dental cleaning anymore. And that actually happened with the double. He got to an age where it was just not worth it anymore. He's like, he's old, he has heart issues, the cough, like to put him under and all that stress just to clean his teeth. Is it worth it? You decide. And I was like, no, we're not doing it anymore. So I think with little miss, even though she looks like a three, like a three year old puppy, she's so cute and hyper and rambunctious and sassy. Um, it's just one of those things that maybe might not be worth it. So we're going to try a little liver supplement for her for a month and then recheck her and see what they say. But man, she was like, can we leave? Like, seriously, like I'm over it. Can we go? So an hour and a half, but you know, it's all for her own health and well-being. And the vet actually was able to uh, do a slide 
for the aspirates that he did on the little lumps and he says I couldn't see anything so it's most likely a abscess or cyst but nothing to be worried about at the moment if you feel if you still feel strongly about them or them growing or you think she's uncomfortable if we can get our liver valleys under control then we'll just land some the next time we see you I'm like okay sounds like a plan doc but now we're off schedule so it's 11 o'clock we gotta hustle home and uh, get some work done right little miss mom will get some work done while you take a nap yeah anyway that's it for now talk to you later two thousand years later you guys happy friday so uh seven thousand weeks later uh the vlog that you guys have been watching has uh i started it two weeks ago it's been a week since we got back from Louisiana and uh, we're wrapping it up today. So it's, it's uh, <laughs> a little bit more than a few weeks have transpired. But as I was editing it, I was like, there's no, I need, I need to like, I need to conclude this vlog somehow. I need to provide some kind of closure. So that's what we're here to do. We took Ernie to Louisiana and I know in just the last little segment where we we're talking about, you know, going on a trip versus going on vacation. She was, she's like the perfect car dog. Like how did I, how did it take me like 10 years to figure this out? She was fabulous, she was wonderful, she did so well. She loved being out there in the country and it was hilarious because you could, <laughs> The type of breed that she is and what she is designed to do is definitely not who she is. <laughs> so she she was so cute. I mean, she saw a horse for the first time. We rode around in a golf cart because that's what she would much rather do than touch the gravel with her delicate paws. She sat in my lap in the golf cart. It was just, it was the, the, it couldn't have been more perfect when it came to Mern, her behavior, how she did, how well the three of us got together on a road trip, you know, listening to Parker. She was such a ham with Parker's mom too. It was just the cutest, best experience ever. If you guys need to do some sort of trip or go out of town or you've been trying to modify your back seat for dogs or you have a grooming or boarding business or daycare or whatever you guys I found the coolest car cover thing protector we had one for when we moved from California to Texas so the one that I have is like 15 years old but it only clips from one side so I found this other one that kind of creates a hammock but it has like zippers and grip and it's literally it has more functionality than I even thought I needed. So like whoever designed this had the need for this and it was like 25 bucks. So I'm gonna link that for you guys. It is brilliant. I know I'm not showing it to you. It's definitely gonna be in an Amazon favorites video cause you, you have, if you have a dog, you need this. Like it is perfect. Anyway, being there was, uh, you know, it was, it, it's always, it's always difficult to see your parents. And I never thought like, what do they say? Like the days are long, the years are short. Every time I see my parents, I have this really weird conflicting thought because you get all those feelings of like, ugh, it's your parents. They're telling you what to do. God, you're so annoying. You know, you get that, you revert into the child being told what to do by their parents. But now that you're an adult and you have your own home and you know, you may have your own kids and you see them the biggest thought that I have is like you, I see my mom and I see like her hands and her skin and the way she talks and the things that she does like little mannerisms that she has now and I'm like that's not my mom you know my mom was like so fast and upbeat and bossy and loud and this and that and you, your parents get older and it somehow feels like you don't. Like, why are my parents getting older? I'm still the same kid. I'm still the same me. Why are my parents getting older? This is weird. And uh, it's just hard, you know, being in that situation. We went to see Parker's mom and, you know, you guys know Parker's older than me. So obviously Parker's mom is older than my parents. And she is 
I guess the best way I could say it, to me, she looks like somebody that has Alzheimer's and her short-term memory is getting pretty bad, but she's, that that's her home, you know? That's where she's comfortable and that's where she feels safe and it's just, I'm a helper. I've always had this trauma response of if I'm not helping, I'm not doing my part. Like my value, my sense of value comes from what can I do to help? And I know that's a trauma response and I'm working on it, but at the same time, it also makes me a caring person, an empathetic person, someone that sees a need and wants to help. And so I thought, you know what, this is, an actually, this is actually a really great opportunity to outsource some help from you guys. So if you guys have any tips, tricks, or ideas of ways that you can, shortcuts or tools or anything, systems that maybe you've tried with someone in your family or you're in the field of like memory loss, dementia, or things like that, and, and you have tricks, you know, obviously I spiraled and I went down the rabbit hole of like systems that I could create to make things easier, like losing the remote or, you know, uh, forgetting that the oven is on or forgetting that you have a load in the dishwasher or the washer or things like that. And I mean, I, I, I feel pretty confident in, in stuff and in a big clock with the date and the time and the month and the day of the week. But, you know, I'm sure there's like a whole universe that I'm not familiar with. And I thought you guys have been some of the biggest uh, sharers or, or contributors when it comes to, to outsourcing, to help, to information. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna throw it out there. I'm gonna throw it out there and see if you guys have any ideas that you can share with me anything I think would help because, you know, I see how much my husband is struggling and is worried, but I also see how he freezes, how it's something that he just feels he can't do anything about. And, you know, while generally speaking, most things are out of our control, as a teacher, I always see things as an opportunity for growth or for learning or for system creation or organization or even just understanding how people think differently and being an asset in a place where, you know, someone else is not. And, you know, Parker is so wonderful. He is just such a wonderful, loving, caring son. And he's a problem solver, you know, he's a logical thinker, he's pragmatic, he's my anchor. I am, I'm, you know, I'm the storm, <laughs> I'm the waves. <laughs> I need the lighthouse, I need the anchor. And so he's, he's great and he thrives at logical thinking and law and things like that, but <sighs> with, I have my strengths and he knows his and so I think this is one of those opportunities where I'm like okay I think I can I think I think I can be of help I think I can help somehow I can I can be an asset don't tell him that I'm cheating and I'm asking you guys for help okay <laughs> so if you guys uh, want to slide into my DMs with some links some help some advice or leave us a comment down below or you're going through the same thing and maybe can share some insight that would be so Super, super helpful. The other thing that I wanted to share with you guys is I went to my PO box and I was devastated because I didn't realize, and this is this is what happens when you have a neurodivergent brain. So there is a reason that in my calendar app, I have like seven or eight different calendars. If I don't write stuff down, it's not that I forget, it's just that I get so overwhelmed that I just don't think about it. And so I never thought about adding a reminder to go check my PO box. And I think the last time that I went there was maybe in January or end of January, beginning of February. So a lot of my packages were returned. So if they were from you, I just, I hope they're from brands. I really hope they weren't from you guys. I was able to pick up a few and it was just so, <laughs> you guys, like, I can't show you what's inside because what's on the inside is what makes me emotional. Anyway, so Rosie from New Jersey, thank you. Your words meant a lot and I wanted to make sure that um, you got the proper thanks from me. Also, our friend Vanessa, you guys know, Vanessa is the mama that has the dog that looks like the dog on The Little Mermaid. She sent us a really sweet card. And as I get closer to this package, <laughs> look at this. How beautiful is that? It's funny, after my two boy dogs passed away, 
and looking into ways of immortalizing them. You know, I found the, the rainbow on Etsy that I've linked for you guys and the little angel from Willow Tree. And she's like, it's, it's, a, it's a little angel that symbolizes grief when you lose somebody. And it's beautiful. I have one of those. We received one from my co-parent after Parker's dad passed away. And so, you know, we're surrounded by reminders of the love that we miss you know, the love that we can't give because we're grieving and it's and it's beautiful, but I never saw anything like this. So I wanted to share this package from Skin Blossom. So Skin Blossom is like an indie skincare brand. One of our pandas, she runs it with her mom. Look at their packaging. That's so cute. It was so thoughtful and so loving and I appreciated it double because yes you're a businesswoman and yes plug your company girl and yes work hard and promote your brand and not losing that human touch you know to be able to to be both to be a good friend to be a good subscriber and to be loving and supportive and empathetic but also to to think about your hustle and to think about your business i you know this it made me so proud to have a subscriber like natalie she sent us this little thoughtful figure after wesley's passing and it's just I still can't hold it without getting like all choked up. I'm having this like weird moment where I feel like I'm gonna forget what they sounded like or what they felt like or what they smelled like. And it's terrifying because, you know, your memories are, are stored in your heart. And I thought so much about what I wanted to talk about at the end of this vlog. And you guys always leave me comments that say, you know, I love your channel, I love your positivity, I love your energy, I come here because it's a respite from everyday life. And everyday life isn't always high energy and positive and encouraging. It is also messy and hard and confusing. And so you get the good with the bad. And I think I do a pretty good job at showing both. But I also know that my sad vlogs or my grieving vlogs or my ranty vlogs are the ones that provoke or trigger more negativity. They are upsetting and, and I understand, you know, how, hey, you feel uh, upset or triggered because you come here to feel happy and, and you know, you I'm whining or I'm complaining or I'm sad or whatever and, and that could be misleading or, or make you feel yucky. But one thing that I actually learned just recently and it was a hard, it was a really hard realization for me. I actually don't remember where I heard it, where I read it, where I saw it. Maybe it was my therapist. Yeah, she said, your triggers are your responsibility. So I think oftentimes when we see something, we hear something, someone says something to us, someone behaves in a certain way and we're triggered. Not only is that a buzzword now that everyone uses, but it's super valid. There are a lot of things that trigger something inside of us, a core memory, maybe a trauma response, something that happened to us in our past. And the thing about triggers is, and this is a, this is a gross example, it's not true. I'm just trying to provide some context. Like let's say Parker triggers me about something he does. Me me expecting to heal from that trigger by making him change his behavior is not healing the trigger or the trauma. It's pushing the blame onto him and validating that my trigger is true. While my trigger is true, a trigger needs to be healed. So I'm responsible for how I react and how I heal and how I process something that triggers me. And so I really wanted to make a point to keep my vlogs happy and bubbly and high energy and this and that and just stay away from the grief talk and stay away from this because I really don't want to be a downer and I don't want to bring other people down. And if, you know, my vlogs are triggering people, then that's not what the purpose of me vlogging is about. But I thought, you know, why not? Like, I'm not happy all the time. I'm not high energy all the time. I'm not you know, my life is in sunshine and bubbles and rainbows all the time. In fact, most of the time, it's the opposite. You know, I don't want my vlogs to be a highlight reel. I don't want my vlogs to be, you know, just the, uh, like the, 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 the highlight, the memories, the, the <laughs> I think if there was a trailer to the movie of my life, it wouldn't be a, hey, look, come see this high energy, bubbly, encouraging, super rom-com, movie I, I don't I don't it would probably be a horror film <laughs> 
I'm kidding. <laughs> I didn't want to get too off, off subject. I guess I just wanted to provide some context to, hey, you know, if, if Danny's like getting teary eyed over something or if Danny's complaining about something, just a gentle reminder that if someone in your life triggers you, your trigger is your responsibility. And I'm not saying that in a reprimandy, scoldy, mommy vo voice kind of way. I'm saying it as a permanent reminder to myself and also maybe something you haven't thought about, you know, because let, I don't know, let's say if you have a mom like mine, like my mom's never gonna change. There are other moms that I'm close to that aren't never gonna change. <laughs> but how I react, that's totally up to me. How I, how I carry that load, it's totally up to me. How I accept it is totally up to me. And so it's just one of those things where, yeah, life is messy. Being a human is hard. And uh, I think there are more downs than ups in life. But I think that if we didn't have so many lows and so many, you know, downs, the ups wouldn't feel so good. We wouldn't appreciate them when they're actually happening. So yeah, maybe there is gonna be some more sharing of sad, angry, stressful things. I don't know, I don't know, but I just wanted to make sure that I shared that little bit. And this probably won't make sense when I watch it back as I'm editing, but it's totally fine because when do things make sense around here? Anyway, poor Natalie sends me all of her stuff to share with you guys. And I'm over here going on some long tangent about how my vlogs are gonna be a little more complainy because life is messy. Sorry, Natalie, sorry. <laughs> You want to do my dog again? <laughs> okay, so Miss Natalie's business, Skin Blossom. Look at the branding, isn't that stunning? I love when there's like watercolor stuff. It's just so soothing and relaxing. So she sent us the Maracuja Glow Potion. Oh yeah, okay, it's just one product. We got two. Ooh, maybe I'll have to share. I'm gonna have to make a friend. So this is a 15% vitamin C super serum. Brightening, smoothing, detoxifying, and age defying. Vitamin C, niacinamide, maracuja, turmeric root extracts. You guys, I have gone down the rabbit hole of turmeric. First of all, is it turmeric or turmeric? Because I've heard both. And I wanna say turmeric, cause that's what I say and I've always said it, but I might be wrong. Uh, green tea, carrot seed, licorice root, watermelon extract, hibiscus extract. One to two pumps onto clean face and neck, twice daily for best results. Always make sure to use uh, sun protection. Oh, I like the tone when oh, it smells good. What does that smell like? It smells familiar. It smells good. It doesn't smell um, synthetic or perfumey or alcoholy. It smells like, like a natural product that smells very tropical almost. I don't know why I'm showing you this, like you can see vitamin C, look at my burns. I was frying the other day. The way I run my life is the way I cook. <laughs> it gets dangerous. Anyway, so thank you Natalie and your mama for sending such a thoughtful gift and uh, for promoting your business. So proud of you, I would have done the same thing, but still, this is definitely, this takes the cake. The last update, and I'll keep it short, do you guys remember the mask that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, movie? vlog what the heck the mask that i talked about at the beginning of this vlog that katie gave me an influencer would say run out and get it because it will change your life or an honest one would because that's what i would say but your friend your friend danny that didn't brush her hair for you guys today would say don't buy it because it's really good but very expensive <laughs> so that that those are my two cents you feel the difference after using it one time. I think I'm gonna include it in a favorites video, but if you were holding on for, you know, with bated breath about the beginning of this, I still can't believe the beginning of this vlog was me getting my hair done, and that was weeks ago, and now the end of the vlog is like, well, I got my hair done, I went to Louisiana, Mern's a great dog, I went to my PO box after like seven months of not going, and uh, that that's the update. So, you know, it, it, this is this is what, this is what friends do, you know? As an influencer that feels compelled to do her job, I'm like, you need to run out to get this mask because it will change your life. It definitely gives your hair softness, but like thickness and strength, it's so bizarre. 
but also um, we're in the middle of a recession and the mask is like $70. So you don't need to be, do, you don't, mm, you know, just do a ponytail, you know, like just, just do, just wear a hat. <laughs> that's what a friend would say. And we are friends. And that's why I feel so comfortable sharing these things with you and also entrust you guys with the power of commenting and advice and support. So anyway, sorry if I made any of you guys get a little lump in the back of your throat or if I triggered one of your triggers. I do mean it, sorry, because it's hard, man. Mental health journey is hard. Holding up the mirror and like understanding why you are the way you are is so hard. It's, it's a lifelong journey, you know? Every time I meet with my therapist, I'm like, what the hell? What the f it's uh it's interesting how it all comes back to your tree. So I think this is how we're gonna wrap up this vlog because my camera's like kind of turning off on me at the moment. She's like, you've talked too long. This vlog was only supposed to be like five minutes. It was an it was an outro. So imagine your life is a tree, right? And I think we've talked about this before. So you are a tree, you, you are a tree, and so your core is the trunk and your core memories are the branches that grow out. Those core memories can be, think about like Inside Out the movie. Those core memories can be uh, the reason you're empathetic, uh, the reason that you wanted to go in the career that you wanted to go to, but ultimately the reason that that core memory is there is because something that happened in your life. So uh, let's see, my hyper-independence. As a child, my needs weren't met to the capacity that I needed them to be met, right? I was annoying and I was clingy and I was like needy and I would forget everything and you know, I wanted to be in the mix and I talked a lot. And so I heard consistently, you know, uh, oh, you're so needy, oh, I'm busy, or um, you know, uh, can you just come later? I'm, I'm putting, doing my makeup. And so it created an inner voice in me that said, you're needy and your needs aren't important. So I became extremely independent, right? And so I was like, oh man, I'm so good at this. And you become independent as a child and as a teenager. And then your parent is like, whoa, this, you know, my daughter is so independent. I'm so proud of her. She does it all by herself. And then you start to, to think, oh, this is a good thing. And you grow up and you turn into a person that is righteously independent at the price of being vulnerable then you have zero vulnerability, right? So one of my branches is being hyper-independent because my needs of, as a child weren't met. So when I feel, when, you know, when Parker says you have to ask me for help, my hyper-independence branch is triggered because if I ask for help, I'm not doing my job. I'm failing because I'm not being independent because being independent is good but is it though? So that core memory was created out of a trauma response. And so maybe that would be a cool thing you do maybe on your free time or if you journal or if you wanna, you know, if you have those little, I don't know if you guys have those little like meetings with your partner at the end of the day and you just talk about things. Uh, Parker and I do that. And if you were to write out your, you know, your, your tree, your core memory tree, you're the core, but the branches that come out, so, you know, like your relationship with your mom or the career path you went to or whatever. And so every time that that core memory is triggered, you have these little branches that come off of the main branch. And if you understand where they're coming from, then it makes you that much more successful at taking your power back from your triggers, from controlling your triggers and not letting them control you. So anyway, I, I said that that would be it and that that's how I was gonna wrap it up and I don't know why I'm feeling so emo today. It's probably because I started my period, TMI, but that's what we do around here. I don't wanna be perfect and I don't want to only share the highlight reel and I don't wanna talk about sunshine and rainbows. I wanna talk about it all and I wanna talk about it with you guys and if you're willing to listen, I'm willing to share. And if you're willing to share, I'm willing to listen because that's how friendships work. Anyway, I wanted to close off this vlog and just not just, just leave you in suspense. And uh, thank you guys for your time, like always. Like any and all my vlogs, anything we did, anywhere we went, anything I did, wore, said, mentioned, if it's available, I'll link it for you guys. <laughs> I don't even remember because it was like three weeks ago. <laughs> so anything that 
is is gonna show up in this vlog. Just check the description box below. There'll be a link. If I forget it, just leave me a comment and I will try my best to get back to you. And if I have missed your comment about a link, leave it here and I promise to get back to you because I need to get back into these comments. This is how I make friends, you know? This is how I make friends and I need to do better. So Danny, do better. That's what Mateo says to me. Mom, just, just do better. <laughs> Anyway, I love you guys so much and you know what to do if you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye guys!